Hi, today I want to go ahead and update some of our information on fraud, waste, and abuse, and general compliance training. Um, one is prevention. So to be able to prevent fraud, waste, and abuse, you need to make sure that you're up to date with laws, regulations, policies. Ensure that you're coordinating with our uh, payers and that our data and billing is accurate and timely and verify the information that you're that is provided to you and just be on the lookout in order to detect activities. fraud waste and abuse you need to know the law and so there is criminal fraud which is knowingly and willfully executing or attempting to execute a scheme or a defraud any health care benefit program or to obtain the means of false and fraudulent pretenses representation or promises of money property owned um, to uh, the health care system um, what does this mean? That you're intentionally submitting false information to the government or a government contractor in order to get money or benefits. Waste is the overutilization of services or other practices that directly or indirectly result in unnecessary cost to the program, such as Medicare or Medicaid program. Waste is generally not considered to be caused by criminally negligent actions, but rather the misuse of resources. Abuse includes actions that are that may directly or indirectly result in unnecessary cost to the program. Abuse involves payment for items or services when there is no legal entitlement to that payment of items or services, and the provider has not knowingly or intentionally misrepresented any facts to obtain that. So don't be concerned though if it's whether it's fraud or abuse. Just report any concerns to your supervisor and or the QA department. Your uh, supervisor QA department area will investigate it and make proper determination because there is a difference between fraud, waste, and abuse. And fraud requires a person to have intent to obtain payment and their knowledge that their actions are wrong. Waste and abuse just may be involving obtaining improper payment but does not require the same intent or knowledge. We still have to report waste. And so abuse. you're going to now, want to just be um, aware of what's going on around you, such as uh, listening and hearing what people are saying and doing and the services that others are providing. It is everyone's requirement to report violations and standards of conduct and suspect, suspect non-compliance. The TSI standard of conduct and policies and procedures should be identified, and it's your obligation to know how to report it. So non-compliance. What is non-compliance? That is when you're not conforming to the laws, guidelines, regulations of the health care program or requirements. It is our ethical and business obligations and policies to do so. So all these following are areas that um, will touch on that can be non-compliance, quality of care, documentation, uh, credentialing, appeals, HIPAA, ethics, workers, therapy, all those are all, that is what non-compliance is, is when you're not in compliance with any of those areas according to the organization's policies and procedures. But let's say that you're um, afraid to report. Now, there can be no retaliation against you for reporting uh, suspected non-compliance in good faith. Each uh, per, must have report methods. So here's our method. It can be anonymous, confidential, and non-retaliation. So you can report that through your supervisor. If it's your supervisor that you are suspecting of fraud and abuse, then take it to the executive director. Part of the compliance is going to be that it's everybody's um, uh, policy and everybody's responsibility to prevent, detect, and correct fraud, waste, and abuse. So to prevent it, we operate within your organizational's ethic expectations and prevent noncompliance. Detect and report. If you detect uh, potential noncompliance, you need to report it and correct it. Correct noncompliance to protect uh, beneficiaries and will save money. I'm going to present three uh, scenarios that you can describe to me uh, or think about and process with your supervisor um, the answers. You have discovered an unattended email or fax in the office which was an appeals request for denied units. You suspect that no one's processing appeals. What should you do? A. Contact law enforcement. B. Nothing. C. Contact your compliance department. D. Wait to confirm someone is processing the appeals before taking further action. E. Contact your supervisor.
The correct answer is C. Contact your compliance department. Suspected or actual noncompliance should be reported immediately upon discovery. It's best to report anything that is suspected rather than wait and let the situation play out. Your QA department will have properly trained individuals who can investigate the situation and then, as needed, take um, corrective action steps to maintain our standards of conduct and policies and procedures. Scenario 2. A worker employed by TSI, let's say it's a VHES worker, has submitted a referral and intake uh, and requested that the enrollment be backdated in one month and have additional units. As the uh, clinician or someone in that range to co conduct that, what should they do? A, refuse to change the date and waive uh, the request, but decide not to mention it to a supervisor or the QA department. B, make the requested changes because the worker is responsible for determining what the client needs are, such as start date and units. C, tell the worker you will take care of it, but then process the application properly without the requested revisions. You will not file a report because you don't want the worker to retaliate against you. D, process the in intake properly without the requested revisions. Inform your supervisor and the compliance uh, and the QA department about the worker's request. E, contact law enforcement to report the worker's behavior. The correct answer is D. Process the application properly without the requested revisions. Inform your supervisor and the QA department about the worker's request. The enrollment application should be processed in compliance with our regulations and guidelines. If you are unclear about the procedure, then you can ask your supervisor for additional and job-specific training. Your supervisor should be aware of the worker's request, and so proper training and necessary disciplinary action can be taken so that the behavior does not continue. No one, including the worker or your supervisor or the QA department, can retaliate against you for reporting non-compliance in good faith. Scenario 3. You work as a therapist. Last month, while reviewing monthly reports, um, like progress reports or discharge, or sorry, progress reports, you identified multiple clients for which the therapist is being paid for and we're billing for who are not attending therapy. You spoke with your supervisor, Tom, who said not to worry about it. <clears throat> Scenario three. Um, as a worker here, either a therapist or a BHIS worker or a CMH worker, you're reviewing um, the doc notes in uh, the case file and you identified that there are documentation in there from a therapist and it looks like they're billed and being paid for services that you know that the client's not receiving. You spoke with your supervisor, Tom, who said not to worry about it. This month you have identified the same um, issues on the same report again. What do you do? A. Decide not to worry about it as your supervisor Tom had instructed. You notified him last month. Now it's his responsibility. B. You thought you have seen notices about a non-retaliation policy. You are still nervous about reporting. To be safe, you submit a report through the QA department, anonymous tip line, so that you cannot be identified. C. Wait until next month to see if the same enrollee is on the report again, figuring it might take a few months for it to be reconciled um, if it's records and billing. If they are, then you say something to Tom again. D. Contact law enforcement to report the discrepancy. E. Ask Tom about the discrepancies again. The correct answer is B. Although you have seen the notices about the non-retaliation policy, you are still nervous about reporting. To be safe, you submit an anonymous um, report through your QA department so you cannot be identified. There can be no retaliation for reports of non-compliance that are made in good judgment. To promote reporting, you should have easy to access confidential reporting mechanisms available to you as employees 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. It is best to report any suspected compliance 
to the QA department promptly to ensure that it remains that we remain in compliance with requirements. To do the right thing, compliance is everyone's responsibility. If you have further information on policies and procedures, your rights and responsibilities, please contact your supervisor for further training. Thank you.